Hello and welcome to your snack sandwich. Today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Clip Finance. Now Clip Finance was added to my shill list. Uh, I don't know who actually put it in there, but you're more than welcome to if you have a project and you want me to take a look at it and perhaps make a video. Uh, it's free, just add your information here and I will do my best to get around to it. So Clip Finance. Uh, Clip Finance is pretty good. I would. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's basically right now. It's a yield vault, uh, so it's kind of like a urine vault, a auto compounding stablecoin vault. Um, but there's some 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 interesting things in here. There's some unique characteristics of this that make it worthy of its own explanation. I do have a flowchart to explain to you this core product. But before I go into the core product, I would like to show the docs. The docs are pretty well written. There's still a few questions that kind of hover inside my mind and I wasn't able to answer by reading the docs but the docs is well written and it's well done they put in a lot of work here so uh, the thing I wanted to show you in the docs here is uh, moving down here so here are some uh, future ideas in the pipeline that I figure I should uh, highlight now so currently they have this uh, fixed or sorry sorry this uh, stable coin this uh, yield optimization stablecoin vault right so you can put in any stable coin and uh, get some some yield on it right <clears throat> but uh, they have some other ideas in the pipeline so I guess maybe the roadmap uh, this yield delegation right where you can send some of your yield to other wallets uh, a debit card which is pretty interesting um, that's pretty hard stuff to to actually get implemented so uh, I would like to see if that happens and then obviously which countries would this debit card be functional uh, on and off ramps which again uh, this is this is a pretty good thing for this sort of product because this product currently is very for it's very hands-off it's very set and forget and uh, kind of just put your money there and walk away so having on ramps for for people would would benefit this quite quite a bit right <clears throat> Uh, DAO focused offerings, so they're you know trying to get DAO's treasuries to also allow them to manage or help out with that. Uh, this one here is pretty interesting. One of the products we are determined to launch in the next six months is an upfront fixed rate yield product. This will enable you to deposit stable coins and get a yield upfront without locking your funds. That's pretty strange. That's pretty interesting. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. This is something maybe I'll keep an eye out for and when it comes around I can take a look at it. But it's like if they're going to pay you up the upfront fixed rate yield, and you don't need to lock your funds. That that, that kind of makes me strip makes me wonder how how could they possibly do that um, if they don't know that you're going to leave your funds there in order to pay that fixed rate to earn that fixed rate. But anyhow, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens perhaps. And then this uh, um, leveraged uh, LSD fine. Basically, you take some ETH. You know, they're going to select which sort of like uh, staked ETH to produce with that ETH. And then they'll put it in Aave or some sort of borrowing platform, borrow some USDC or USDT or borrow some, you know, some stable coins and put it into the product that I'm going to talk about now. So let's get to the flowchart and I'll explain to you how this, uh, this yield optimization, this, uh, this stable coin vault is going to work and how it makes it kind of special. Okay. Okay. So here we are on the flowchart. We have dollar bill. He has some stable coins. He can come to clip and deposit his stable coins, any one of the four stable coins that are currently covered because it's on Binance right now, Binance Smart Chain or BNB Chain, whatever you want to call it. And uh, But they do talk about it being multi-chain. So in the future, there will be other chain opportunities and you can go there to put in your, your assets or maybe even you can put your assets anywhere and they will move it across chain for you and so forth. They talk a little bit about being able to batch contra batch <clears throat> stable coins across bridges so it will be like more like an omni chain type uh, vault in the future so comes along with one of these stable coins and he will deposit it into this vault now this is the first thing that is different he gets back a nft instead of a erc20 share token okay instead of a your uh, urine vault token he gets back an nft now <clears throat> it's important to understand why okay so when i guess this nft the nft has a uh, three metadata it has obviously the amount of us dollars he he was put in here based on the oracle price of these things right and then it also gives a has a price per share for that current one but more most importantly it has this cycle id so the cycle id is to to 
to make sure that when he deposits, he is not getting the yield of people who had deposited before him. Okay, so every time there's a harvest call, then the cycle ID is updated. And then, so if you deposit right, like be, right before a harvest, you, you won't get that harvest yield, you will be added to the next cycle. So you're, so this is an interesting idea. This is obviously better than the other way where if like you know there's going to be a big harvest, so you deposit your assets and you get a big har you get a big chunk of other people's harvest, right? So that's the first idea here. And then of course you have this NFT and anytime you can use it to uh, redeem it for your underlying assets. Uh, now, the stable coins are sent to multi-strategies, okay, so I've just put some random numbers here, 30, 20, 50, to, to whatever, any kind of these strategies. They talk a lot about being able to monitor this, move these, adjust these, and stuff like that, and they have this large uh, part of the documentation that talks about risk scoring matrix. I'm going to swing it in here. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's pretty long and I do suggest you to come read it. It's, it's pretty good. It talks about how they, you know, how they assess the risk of the different yield farms opportunities and then how they use that risk scoring to uh, allocate uh, funds to those, to those, to those different uh, possibilities. Okay. Now, of course, this is an auto compounding vault. So any tokens that are taken from here, any reward tokens are sold for the underlying stable coins and, uh, and you know, just yielding and stuff like that from, because let's say it's just, you know, interest based on the utilization of your stable coin in, in the bridges and stuff like that. So any reward tokens are sold, auto compounding, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> Now, they also talk about rewarding the depositors with uh, CLIP tokens, the governance token of the CLIP protocol. So you will also be earning some of these CLIP tokens. Now you can take those CLIP tokens and you, of course you can sell them or you can lock them, stake them. This is where I kind of, I wasn't able to get a clear understanding if locking and staking is the same thing. So, but they do talk about staking and uh, earning a, a staking and the benefits of staking and they also talk about locking in order for governance so i'm going to presume that it's the same thing here so you lock your your clip tokens and you can then vote on governance proposals and uh you're now staked now it doesn't talk about like the locking duration and i wasn't able to find anywhere how long a lock is required but there's some sort of like you know there's definitely a small amount like a, a certain amount you can't just lock fractions of, uh, of a clip token, you have to lock a certain amount. And again, how many you must lock, I'm not sure as well. Okay, so it doesn't say in the docs. Now, there's a performance fee on these volts of 12%. It's pretty hefty. And they say, the only thing they say in the docs is that a portion of it will be shared with stakers. Okay, so that's why I'm trying to say like, I'm not sure if the stakers are the lockers or if they're the same thing or not, but if they are, then every, you know, they're gonna get uh, this portion and how much of this 12%, I, I have no idea. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. Now, the most, the next interesting thing, the thing that really sets this aside are they have these NFTs that you can purchase, okay? So they have different groups of NFTs. So they have like this guy group and then they have this guy's group. So they'll take like maybe this NFT, change a shirt, change a cigar, maybe give them a hat, I'm, I'm not sure, right? So they have these different styles of uh, NFTs, they're called uh, legions, okay? So they have different legions and each legion has a thousand warriors, a thousand like different kinds of, of Sven or different kinds of, I don't know, whatever this guy's name was, Arthur or something, right? <clears throat> so uh, each of them are cost 0.08 ETH. Before they were one, uh, 0.1 ETH, but they were reduced in price. I, I'm not sure, maybe to try to encourage selling. And uh, the also, they're on mainnet ETH. So you, when you mint these, you're minting these NFTs onto a mainnet ETH, not onto Binance Smart Chain, okay? Now, what they do is they allow you to gain mana, okay? So if you, if you're, if you have one of these Legion NFTs or like one of these warriors, say you have a Sven warrior, right? <clears throat> and you deposit, then your Legion, so the Sven Legion, will get mana based on all of the Legion deposits. So everyone who has a Sven uh, Warrior 
who deposits will get some mana for his legion, okay? And then referring other people to deposit. Hey, deposit here, and they use your referral link, then you get your legion will get mana. Uh, voting, you only need to vote once if there's a vote up, and then that voting will, will uh, <coughs> gain you some mana. Now, they, the reason why they only want one vote is so people don't just spam the crap out of this, out of the voting, pro the governance process to kind of Sybil attack it. And then they talk about staking as well. So if you stake uh, clip tokens, so I'm kind of, like I said, I'm assuming that that's also locked, you know, GLP, G, uh, G CLP tokens, right? So if you, if you're in the staker, right? If you're in the staker, you're also going to gain some mana for your legion, okay? So now you're allowed to obviously buy more than one of these NFTs, but uh, if you, you're only allowed to select one of these NFTs as your warrior. So they call it capturing others. And basically if I am, if I say I have a Sven warrior, I like Sven and I buy a whole bunch of these other warriors. There's a whole bunch, there's like 10 different legions, right? So let's say I, I buy a whole bunch of these guys, then I'm decreasing the, the ability of this legion to actually gain mana because I'm holding the, those NFTs and they're not participating in this, uh, <clears throat> this game, right? So they have these 14 day battles, so two week, that's kind of an epoch of this gaining these mana. And they also uh, separate the, the top 10 warriors. So if my warrior, if I'm depositing a massive amount or I'm referring a massive amount, or I'm gaining a whole bunch of mana for my legion, then I become one of the top 10 warriors and I, I get a boost on what it what I get. Now it talks, uh, if you follow along here, it talks about what they actually do and they say basically you get a pro rata based on your mana. So if you have an NFT and you're staked, a portion, this portion of this 12%, I believe, it, I'm not sure, it didn't talk about actually putting any clip tokens onto these stakers either, like inflationary rewards. So it just says a pro rata based like on the mana. So your this this portion will be then divided so the legion with the most mana gets the biggest pro rata share of this and then those top 10 warriors get boosted shares of those of that of that that rewards to their staking so i think this is pretty interesting it's definitely gam gamifying this uh um, this vault system and it's encouraging deposits and referrals to deposit and uh, it also encourages staking instead of selling the the clip token so as always you know i would suggest you to go read the docs like i said before the docs are pretty well written you know they've put in a lot of effort and a lot of time into writing those docs and uh you know go to their discord ask more questions find out more if this is something interesting to you uh, i hope this has been useful and interesting thank you so much for watching and goodbye if you would like to support the channel, I would suggest you to check out the secret sandwich.xyz. It's the secret sandwich NFT project. You can come here, you can mint an NFT, or you can come and check out your NFTs.